The hoops are not back in action until the weekend, but that doesn't stop the news coming out of paradise. In today's video, we'll discuss all the latest Celtic news from the last 24 hours. That includes the club agreeing a double deal ahead of the summer. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we do get into today's video, as always, make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Celtic content. Fraser Forster is fondly remembered as one of the greatest Celtic goalkeepers in modern history. The imposing Englishman regularly pulled off saves that defied belief while consistently performing to an optimum level. He single handedly helped the Hoops win the 2019 League Cup with a memorable display in the final versus Rangers, and his performance against Barcelona at the Champions League in 2012 was nothing short of outstanding. Across two spells of Celtic, Forster won eight trophies. He was a fan favourite at Parkhead, and even now, the 36-year-old still loves the club. Indeed, the Englishman recently admitted on Ben Foster's Fozcast podcast that he still keeps up to date with the proceedings in Glasgow's East End. He said, It's such a special club. Genuinely, even now, I'll go straight on and see if they've won. It is a shame that Forster's time at Celtic ended on a negative note of Covid. He did leave a nine-in-a-row champion, however, and he will be fondly remembered in the minds of the supporters for his outstanding saves and extraordinary performances. Over the years, plenty of Celtic's greatest talents have come from within, as the club retains a proud history of developing prestigious prospects. In recent years, there maybe hasn't been a mass influx of homegrown starlets filtering through from Lennox Town to the senior squad. However, Callum McGregor and James Forrest symbolise what can be achieved for young players through dedication and hard work. Intriguingly, Brennan Rodgers has previously signalled his intention to tap into the academy structure to supplement the first team during his second spell at the reigning Scottish Premiership champions. He stated earlier this year, I'm conscious here. I want to be here for a period of time as long as, of course, I'm successful. So I also want to create an opportunity for young players to come through here. Everyone talks about signings and bringing people in, and I always say that you might have someone within your academy, but you need to have the space for those players to flourish and develop. Sparingly, the Irishman has put this notion into practice, offering minutes to the likes of Daniel Kelly and Rock of Arte in high-profile matches. It does feel to some like there has been a disconnect between Celtic and their youth system over the years. Nevertheless, it is refreshing to see Rodgers' enthusiasm to enact a change on that front. The Hoops today have announced that they have agreed a double deal, Celtic B duo Corey Thompson and Jude Bonner, who have both committed their future to the club by signing two-year extensions. The pair have been involved heavily in the Lone League and played their part in the UEFA Youth League and Premier League International Cup this campaign. Bonner is a talented midfielder who made a step up to the B team in 2023 after working his way up with Celtic under-18 setup. Meanwhile, Thompson operates primarily on off the left flank and has completed a second full year under Stephen McManus and Darren O'Day, with the latter soon embarking on a new venture as a Hoops professional player pathway manager. Hopefully both players can continue their progression at B-team level, which may one day present the opportunity to break into the senior ranks. Celtic has announced a set of tickets for their highly anticipated final away game of the season against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park. This match, potentially a pivotal moment in Celtic's title campaign, has been scheduled as the season penultimate clash. The allocation and sale details were confirmed Tuesday afternoon, with availability restricted to a select group of supporters, boasting decent away game credentials. This season, Rugby Park has proven to be a challenging venue for Celtic, adding historical weight to the upcoming encounter. Under the leadership of Brendan Rodgers, Celtic has faced setbacks at this ground, including a critical knockout in the League Cup and a defeat in the SPFL by Derek McInnes' Kilmarnock. The significance of the match remains uncertain, as Celtic prepares for two critical home games against Hearts and Rangers in the coming weeks. The outcomes of those matches could position the Kilmarnock game as either a potential league title clincher, or conversely a match that could dash their championship hopes. The club has allocated that a limited ticket allocation of 3,835 seats is available, which is lower than usual. Eligibility for purchasing tickets is limited to a season ticket holders who attended at least seven away games during the 2022-23 season. As excitement builds, the limited ticket availability has transformed this into a golden ticket event for Celtic fans, many of whom are eager to witness their team possibly make history. The clamour for tickets is huge. 
Celtic have had their issues at centre half this season. The Hoops' backline has been criticised for a lack of stability at times, but inconsistently has been inherent throughout the campaign. All of Brennan Rodgers' defenders have been injured at one point or another throughout the campaign. Indeed, several players have come in and out of the team, especially at the heart of the rear guard. The likes of Stephen Welsh, Gustav Lagerbilk, Mark Nowaki, Liam Scales, and Cameron Carter Vickers have all played at some point. While a relatively steady partnership between Scales and Carter Vickers seems to have built up over the past few weeks, nothing is comparable to how solidified the backline was when Carl Starr felt part of the American Colossus. The pair never lost a league game when starting together, and this campaign Starr felt has been a noticeable miss. Pundit Kenny Miller thinks some Hoops fans didn't appreciate the now Celta Vigo man until he was gone. He said when speaking to Clyde on Super Scoreboard, is he as good as Starr felt? Who knows? A lot of people were saying, even when Starfelt was here, that the left side of that defence needs to be sorted out, because Starfelt's this, he's that, and again, you realise maybe what you had once is away. James Forrest's standout performance for Celtic has earned him a second consecutive spot on the SPFL Team of the Week. The season winger was pivotal in Celtic's 2-1 victory over Dundee, scoring both goals for his team. The first strike was straight out of the top drawer, and had he scored it sooner, it would have been up for goal of the season at the Hydro. His consistent form over the past few weeks has sparked discussions about a potential recall to the Scottish national team for the upcoming European Championship. At 32, Forrest's inclusion would mark a significant return to the national squad, having been absent for several years. Given Scotland's current energy struggles and the expansion of the squad size to 26 for the Euros, Forrest's experience and recent performances could be invaluable. His resurgence at a crucial time for both club and country could see him play a vital role in Scotland's campaign this summer. Celtic will host Hearts at Celtic Park, a match that carries significant implications for the title race. With only a few games left in the season, Celtic currently have a three-point buffer. However, Hearts have proven to be a formidable opponent, having defeated Celtic both home and away earlier in the season. Today, the SFA have announced the appointment of Kevin Clancy, and assisting from the sidelines in the VR room will be Nick Walsh. Earlier encounters between Celtic and Hearts this season have been contentious, marked by significant VR decisions. In their last meeting at Tynecastle, a controversial penalty awarded to Hearts and a red card to Yang turned the tide of the game. These decisions have intensified discussions about the influence of officiating on the title trajectory. As Celtic prepares to rectify past defeats, they face not only the challenge of overcoming their opponent, but have to be very careful not to get into VAR's crosshairs when any sort of incident can be slowed down and justified. The game itself should be a cracker. Hart striker Lawrence Shankman in particular poses a significant threat. It will be incumbent upon Celtic's defence to neutralise his efforts and shift the momentum in favour of the home side. As the officials ready themselves for a game that could potentially sway the title, all eyes will be on Celtic Park this Saturday. The outcome of this match could very well dictate the destination of the Scottish Premiership title. Celtic fans, what do you make of what we discussed in today's video? In particular, the two deals that have been agreed for the Celtic B players. Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. As always, make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.